value that automatically changes them? Um, I'm building I understand. Event driven, so that <coughs> any time that value changes, then oh no, so so it's not um, event driven. It's when I run the program. Okay. It so it checks that every time when you go to the input section, it checks then. It doesn't check when you change. Okay. And and we'll we'll show an example of that with with some with something with more inputs and, and kind of. Uh, but and, and that's a good point. To actually run your program, we hit this button right here, which you can see is run. Uh, this one's run continuously for for our purposes in FRC. Don't use that. Um, if I was to do that here, all you'd see is it just keeps running in a loop. Um, sometimes good for debugging, but not in FRC, so don't do that. Um, and then if something's running and you want to stop it, you press this button. Uh, that's kind of a kill button. And then for debugging, there's um, our, our most important, our, our most useful tools are this um, highlight execution, which shows us the shows us um, as the as the data actually flows. And then this one is also really useful. It says routine wire values. Um, so if I was to, if I wanted to know what the value is on this wire, um, for us it's pretty obvious because it's just five. Right, um, but with more complex, complex examples, you'll see um, sometimes it's not apparent. What I can do is I can right-click and say Pro. Uh, you can say it says not executed. So right now I, I don't know what that value is. If I keep this retain um, values, if I run this after it's after it's done, I can click this and you'll see it stays. So those are kind of the debug debugging tools that are useful for this. Any questions on the basic basic part here? Uh, so a couple other things that you, that you probably need to know for this. Uh, we, we don't have too much time to go in depth, but um, some of the important ones here on this programming palette, there's um, structures. So if we actually want to control the flow of our program and, and, and make, some, make something useful, uh, we can do things like loops. If we want, if we want this section of code to run ten times, we can use this loop. So, so we can use a loop. We can select around this, and now this stuff is part of this loop. Um, so this is what the, the major control structures of this look like. So now this is the loop. We'll also notice here is that the, this arrow is not broken. So when I said this, when I said live view is safe, um, if if the code is broken, it's not going to let you run it. And an easy way to tell why it's broken is if you actually click this, it'll say for loop n is not wired. It'll tell you exactly what it is. And if you double click it, it'll highlight. It. So it'll show you exactly what's wrong. For a for loop, we need to tell the number of times that it needs to run. For this, I'll right click. I can go to create constant, and then I'll create a number for me, and I can select. And if I run it, I ran it really fast. If I run it, you'll see that this will run 10 times. And I'm not going to watch the whole thing. So that's ways that you can make a loop. There's also a, another very important one is a case structure. So if we want certain code, if we want to be able to tell certain code to run only under certain conditions, we use this case structure. So the, the case structure is a very, it also looks like this. You can see the kind of different graphic. We can select code and we can put it inside here. And then we can come up with some condition. So I'll bring this code out. So you can see it's pretty easy for me to bring code in and out in loops. I get rid of this. I'm going to say, I'm going to start with a more compound operation here. So what I'm going to say is, if I want to, I want to execute this chunk of code if the result of this is less than five, for example. So we can come here and say comparison say less less is two inputs. Another helpful thing here is if you hover over the output, you'll see what the condition is. So it says x less than y. Um, and so I'm going to 
require this. I'm going to create another constant value by right clicking. I'm going to create a constant. I'm going to say 5. And I'm going to wire this to this little question mark, which is our case selector. Another thing to notice this wire is now green, while these are orange. Um, what that means is that these are a type of number, specifically a number with a decimal point. And um, this wire is a true or false. So the green like this is a true or false constant. And now if you run this, you'll see 11 is not less than 5, which makes this false. And then it executes this, which is nothing. All right, any questions? Make sense? All right, we shall continue. Uh, all right, so we'll, we'll dive back into our robot code again. So we jump back into our main code. Again, I'll get this straight here. Why not good? Again, I press Control E to get to our code. So this is our general structure. And what is What's also nice is that here, we have uh, kind of some documentation about what everything says. I guess one thing I did not show you. Uh, oh, okay. So if we have, if we have our, if we have our set of codes, like our, um, we had our, our plus minus, whatever. If we have some chunk of code that we want to repeat in places, think of like a uh, function, things like that, we can create reusable blocks that look like these. So each of these blocks is some other BI that um, has a chunk of code. So if I was to double click on this one, you'll see another Windows box pops up. So this just has more code in it. So each one of these boxes called sub BIs have um, more code. So that's why I say this is kind of a high level structure. So if we were to if we were to watch how this chunk of code was ran or runs based on our data flow, how would how would how would this code run? Anyone want to kind of walk us through here? Very basic. All right, good. So you get your you run your initial BIs. Okay goes through and then you don't want to get into the loop, it just keeps repeating that and <coughs> terminates in the other VIs where and periodic are loop VIs. So they are continuously running also. Okay, good. Yeah, so so what he's saying is it starts we start with all our um, anything that, that needs an input. Remember if it, if, if the input if what that is not at the input it will not start it. So you see these blocks don't actually have any inputs. I can, I can say that because all the inputs are um, on the left. Um, and as, as you play with this too, you'll kind of be able to tell, um, tell that. There's actually one here, just, you can see if I hover over this, there's a, there's a terminal. Um, sometimes, sometimes those are optional. In that case, in this case, that's an optional. So all these will start. That will run this way. So as soon as this finishes executing, all of this wire now has data. So once that is true, this block can start executing. This block can start executing. Um, this data will also be here, so this block will execute. Um, so basically, after this begin VI runs, all of these blocks will ex start executing. And that will happen all in parallel. Um, you can see we have kind of a control structure. This is a, called a while loop. So this runs until some event. And so this runs your main, your, your, your kind of main code. Now that while loop there, is it just a walk through? It just runs regardless? Um, so so to, actually, to actually be able to tell where or what stops it, this little block, if you were to create a while loop, it's, you'll see it. Every while loop has this little block, and that's the loop condition. So you can wire one of the true falses to that to that condition, and if that's 
this case, if it's true, then it stops executing. Otherwise, it'll keep executing. Now, just like just like the data flow before, um, a loop doesn't doesn't execute its or the, the loop waits until everything inside of it has executed before it starts executing again. Does that make sense? So even though these, like these here, are not connected to any of these, so as soon as this loop starts, these will actually run in parallel with this chunk of code. But it won't run a second time until all of the code is executed. So if you wanted to make that serial, you'd actually have to put that in? In some other structure. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this, this VI, luckily, you, you really don't have to modify this one. Uh, one, of the, one of the big stylistic things that NI did when they came up with this template is they, um, they kind of tell you here what code um, you, you should edit. That doesn't mean you can't. Um, but generally, this is the, the structure you use. Any VI that you see with this blue and red, like this, <coughs> those are the VIs that they recommend that you edit. So it makes it kind of easy that you, that you know where, kind of where things go. Um, the actual icon for this file is on the top right. And you can see there's no, it doesn't have that. So this, you can just kind of leave. Uh, but this is, but this will be, you can reference this to, to get to the rest of the files. Um, this, this is probably the easiest way to do it. So, so for the, uh, this, this might be kind of specific to, uh, to the robotics libraries, but we're, uh, the way that the code generally works is for every object, for every kind of module, there's a portion where you initialize it, um, and then you do whatever you want to do with it, and then you close it. So it's kind of in three steps. So the first step is in begin. So that's kind of where everything, that's where, that's where everything starts from. So if we go into begin, again, another VI will pop up. Press Control E to get into the block diagram. This is our initialization. So this is kind of where we start our code. So, and again, any of these boxes are just helpful documentation. So initialization is really just creating, creating objects that you can use later. Um, you really don't do much else than that. So in this example, we have some drive base that we initialize. That's what this chunk of code is doing. And they have some comments for that. And then they initialize a joystick. So one single joystick. So this is probably a good time to show where you can actually find these blocks. So all of the kind of library functions for WPI, sorry, for the robotics libraries, um, the libraries are actually called the WPI library, so you might hear that term. All of those are found, if you right click, the WPI robotics library. Um, this is, this has all of the libraries for specific modules on the robot. So we can, so if we, unfortunately the names aren't listed, but if you hover over, you can kind of see what everything is. So yeah, robot drive, joystick, sensors, actuators, IO, and then there's some other um, communication. So, it, so like these left right drive motors, you can find under robot drive, that says open, open, um, Open two motor. So if I was to create that, you'd see it's the same block as that one. So every kind of module has some initialization like that. They say open. So there's open, and then there's this block. And again, this is very specific to the WPI library, um, but it's important. So there's what they call a reference. So they take this <coughs> this block and it outputs a reference, which is what this wire is. And then it kind of stores this reference um, to be used later. That's what that's what this block does. So what I just did is I pressed Control H for help, and uh, yeah, you can read that. So this will tell you what the name of the VI is, uh, and, and a little bit about what it does. So in this example, we have uh, robot drive refnum registry set. So where it stores it, they call a registry. 
and all your components, you can name them and store it there. So that's what this does. So it, so it takes in, so the inputs to this block um, are the, uh, the, ref, the registry set, the actual name that you want to name it, and then, and then this error wire. Um, and then the last one is a safety config. So for any, any drivetrain, um, any, any motor components, uh, there's the function where it, the thing that actually drives the motor and the controller stop talking to each other for any time longer than about 150 milliseconds, it'll actually stop your motor. Um, and I think this one actually makes it a little bit less, this block, but this is just telling it to enable that functionality. Um, I think there's, I don't actually know the exact implementation, but I believe there's, there's two, so there's, you can enable it here, and you can set what the time is. If you don't enable it, there's still some safety mechanism that's built into the RoboRio, um, but generally you just want you want to keep that. And then for, so 